this is the first man that caught my attention the way that he did. Um, I started, I guess, caring about him and I, I didn't even know him. And I started realizing that something wasn't right, um, that he had a lot of pain, um, was unsure of himself, and I just knew deep down inside that he really wasn't happy. He, he put on a front. So I would see him like trying to talk to all these girls and flirting and just being, you know, the, the way that he was. I would look at him and be like, you know, shaking my head and do stuff. And he didn't know that I was a Christian at the time. He just saw me as another trainer. Um, so then he would start like going on the treadmill next to me and um, I would bring up conversations about God, I would kind of throw them into our conversations and he would just get off the treadmill <laughs> and, and kind of walk away and not really want anything to do with it. So I could tell, okay, you know, he's just not, he, he, he was very hurt in his life. And so that's, that's how I understood it. That he just, his heart was very hardened and he just, he felt like there was, there was way too much that he did in his life for God to ever forgive him. And that's kind of what he said to me one day when we were on the treadmill. He said, God's not gonna forgive me for the things that I've done. I said, yes, he already has. You just need to ask him. You know, and from that day, I think something changed. And um, I remember the, there was one night that he called me or he texted me and he didn't wanna live anymore. And I remember jumping out of the bed and it was like 12.30 at night and I stayed up the whole night texting him back, you know, telling him how much God loved him, how much everybody loves him and how, you know, this is just not something that he should ever think about doing and that it's gonna be okay, you know, and um, I ended up talking him out of it and I told myself, you know, the next day when I see him and I'm not a, that called? A hugger. I'm not a hugger. I don't show my feelings. I've never been this way my whole life. And for some reason, my feelings were coming out towards him where I needed to show him affection. And I'm just not that way. And I started noticing that God did want me to help him. He wanted me to show him the love that he needed. You know, so I said to myself, the next day I go in the gym, I don't care if I see him, I'm going to go up to him and I'm going to hug him. And it was kind of, you know, for me, I was like, am I really gonna do this right now? You know, and, but once I saw him, I just went up to him and I, I hugged him and he like at the time was like, ah, you know, <laughs> like, I hate you. But at the same time knew, you know, it was almost like I was. What, like motherly love? Yeah. Like, but I was like, you were angry, but not angry at the same time. You were. I was just, I was just angry, angry. I don't know what I was angry at. I was angry at everything. I'm and angry. yeah, and after that day, things changed where I realized that I had feelings for him. The whole time I didn't, you know, but at that very moment, I realized I did. And I realized that every time I saw him, I got happy. And I felt like I needed, he, I knew he needed God in his life. He just didn't know how to have him or what to do. And there's no way to explain, to explain it, to say, this is how you do it. And it took two years, you know, of us being together. And it's not like I could say to him, JC, just do it. You know what I mean? You can't just tell somebody or say like, look how happy I, I am, or look at the peace that I have, you know? Don't you want it to? It's like, it's something where you've reached your end. You've reached your, your breaking point but, in life. But think about how, how great like God is, like how he got you to come all the way from Florida. I know. He got John. <laughs> he got he that went. lady to sign me up for that class. Yeah. Then he put John in my life and then. Well, like, everything, everything was aligning. And that's the thing, he always works anything bad for good. 
you know? So it's like me leaving Florida to Connecticut to here was because of the adultery that happened in my marriage, you know? That we ended up getting divorced and I ended up being out here, you know? So it's like he works everything out for the good, but it's like who would have thought that I was going to end up at this gym and get myself into really good shape to then go to this gym. You know what I mean? It's not like I could just end up at this gym and be like, all right, and you would just come up to me at, you know, 196 pounds because you probably wouldn't have talked to me. You know? I mean, it's the truth. But. It's just, I just, it's, I'm just very grateful for everything, how everything happened. And, if um, you look at it that way, you know what I mean? Like, you see it. Back then, you don't see it. You just see, oh, there's a pretty because girl. Because we, we always think that it's like us, or yeah. like, you know, and, and we, we miss it. That's really, it's always him working. And that's why, like, I think uh, our lives are changing so much right now because I finally, like, gave in and said, yeah. all right, here, yeah. take you everything. take the wheel. Because at the beginning, I was just kind of picking and choosing what I wanted to give him, and, and it doesn't work like that. You yeah. actually have to give him everything or else. It's not like a, a real contract. It's it's, it's a no, because you're still trying to do it. Yeah. And in the beginning, you know, it's like you just looked at me and said, like, oh, there's this girl that I'm attracted to, and that's really all that it, you know, you thought that it was. I knew at that time that this was something that was from God. This was not from me because I I knew my feelings and I knew something wasn't right with you. I, and, and like for me to see how you were as a person at that time, I mean, you were a womanizer, a liar, a cheater, you know, and those are all the things that I run from. But I welcomed it, <laughs> you know? I was, I was all in knowing all of those things. But that's only because I know who's protecting me, you know? And, and, and like to be completely, completely honest, like people don't know really how bad my trauma was, my, my uh, PTSD, my just everything, my trauma in general. Um, when I'm saying it was bad, I'm saying like I was ripping through walls, ripping through sinks, uh, ripping doors off, you know, waking up at night. Uh. <laughs> Our dog just moved the camera. Waking up at night, uh, uh, you know, uh, all right, Molly. Molly. <laughs> Stop. Aww. <laughs> She's relaxing. <laughs> but um, it, it was bad. And, and you, know, you know what the sad part was is that I didn't know how bad it was because I had gotten used to living in, in constant chaos where I didn't even know what peace was. I didn't know what trust was. I didn't know what joy was. I didn't know what patient was, patience was. and. It's crazy because my whole life has flipped around and like now I drive the speed limit. Yeah, he <laughs> Everybody's does. passing me out. I used to be so scared to get in the car with him. I would have such bad anxiety. I'd be like, I'm going to end up dying today. Like his, his driving just, it was crazy. And now I'm like, holy crap. Like he doesn't get mad anymore. He's very calm all the time. I get to sleep all night. <laughs> There's like, you know, everything has changed because of God. And, and, and when I say guys, like, I keep it real 100, like, cause you know, I, I always say that I was like from the streets and, and gangster and all that. Like, when I say I went through everything, I went through therapy, I went through hypnosis, I went through everything and, and nothing worked. Nothing gave me what I have today in, in my, my John describes it the best, you know, he, he says that God gave me a new heart, so my new heart is, is not stone no more, so I actually have peace, joy, you know, patience, um, all the fruits of the spirit, pretty much, and and that's what I feel today, and um, I'm just, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy with, with my life. There's a smile on his face all the time, yeah. all the time, and, 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 and uh, you know, and, and this is, I, I've learned that this is constant training, just like the, the gym, just like any, anything else that you want to get good at. Uh, you constantly have to do it. So like in the mornings, I, I wake up, like I, I, the first thing I want to do is read. I want to read the Bible. I want to 
I want to read the, you know, the Psalms that I read or, or the, the, just I want to read it and I'm just in love with Jesus. And he's in love with you. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, just, it's just a really good thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I just have to say for anybody out there that has been through a similar life like me, uh, um, you know, on the streets, uh, I've seen too much, done too much, uh, it's never too late and it's never too much. God can fix anything that was stolen from you, anything that was taken. He can rebuild anything in your heart, in your world, in your life, anything. And you just have to have a little bit of faith and, and trust them. And I guarantee you, you, you won't be disappointed. You have to give it your all and, and believe that it's gonna happen. And I think a lot of the times we, we don't, you know? And we sit there and say like, it's impossible. You know, like we have to do this for ourselves. If this doesn't happen, I used to say it, you know, to my dad all the time growing up. He used to say, Beth, are you giving it to God? Beth, have you given it? And I said, Dad, I mean, I've given him, you know, I tell him all the time, I, I, I need help with this, I need help, but it's not like that, you know? It, it, you have to fully believe that he can do what he says he's going to do. It's written, you know, and everything that he says he's going to do, he does do but you have to give it to him 100% and say, that's it. I'm, I'm not in control of my life no more. You are. You know what's right, you know what's wrong. So if you start doing things right, you're gonna see your life change. When you do things wrong, you know what happens. I mean, we all do. And if there's, you know, if there's any women that are going through anything, I mean, really anything, or similar to my story and what I've been through, whether it's in a relationship or sexual abuse, um, you know, there is hope. There is a way to find peace and to be okay in this world. I, I know, you know, I'm one of them and you just have to pick up your Bible, you have to give it all to God and your life will change. You'll see it change. I'm, I mean, we're living proof. <laughs> My name's JC. And I'm Bethany. Rella Raw. Uncut. Unfiltered. If you ain't seeing it here, you ain't living it. Faith. Family. Fitness. I chose the life I'm living. Out here trapping in it. Turn to work the business. Oh, I can surrender. I try to.